You ready, spaghetti? Sit. 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 Lay down and stay. Here's one. Sit. Be a good girl. Stay. Put your butt down. Stay. Okay, very nice. One more. Stay. Good girl. So we're here in the fish room. And uh, I've been waiting to do any type of fish room tour or update or anything. Thinking like, oh, someday the fish room will be done and then I'll do it. But is that ever going to happen? I mean, this is a hobby. Am I ever done? No. And I don't think I'm ever going to be done. And I think it's always going to be a disaster, work in progress and all that stuff. So we're down here with Lily. And I'm just going to show you uh, what's going on, what some of my plans are. And, of course, that's always subject to change. Uh, I think I'm going to be focusing mostly on live bearers, shrimp, near Caradina, and um, shell dwellers. So I mostly keep hard water tanks. My water doesn't come out hard, but uh, we work with it. So I'm going to start over here. This is my uh, blue shrimp tank from LRB, Team A, and worth it. They are beautiful. So they're doing their thing, and hopefully they have so many more babies that we have to move them over to a different tank. And we will plan for that. Down here is Team Red. Uh, and they've had, they did way better just moving in and everything. And um, I'm already starting to pull calls from them out. And uh, man, I got to trim this plant back. Um, one of these days on Father Fish, we're going to go tank from tank and find out what all my plants are. Because a lot of them I don't know. Like I don't, it's probably super common right here. I have no idea what it is. I know I have pretty willow moss in there, but I need to get this hair algae off of it. See, always work to do. Uh, the substrate, because sometimes people ask, um, this is play sand down here. This is a uh, finer grain. This is pool filter sand. That's crushed coral. And uh, there's some of that crushed coral underneath. This is the black sand blasting sand and a little bit of uh eco complete mixed in for the plant friends uh look how nice and red yeah so oh there's a good one in there too i see ya. down here um it's gonna be kind of an overflow tank um Whoever needs more room first, but today from the sale at Aquatic Arts, I got some King Koopa snails, nearites, and uh, ordered three, a pack of three, and I ended up with four, and uh, they're all showing us their faces <laughs> right now, except for this one. They're really cool. I love those gold rings on there and hopefully they have babies in there uh, quickly we're passing by Vic Vinegar here a young crested gecko he his enclosure gets moved around the fish room wherever it's out of the way at the moment so uh, you'll see him around up here are my CPDs celestial pearl Daniels my Local fish store is super old school, so I still have to ask them for galaxy rasboras when I buy them. And then also there are some of the green emerald rasboras in here. Erythromicrons. I don't know why they call them emerald, though, because I don't see any green on them. They, you know, it's strange. They're a little more skittish. And I know these guys can crossbreed. Um, I'm going to separate them. And I have to try to get them to make more babies. Uh, I'm going to fill this thing up with marbles and 
put some in here just blonde up here are my baby tomato vampire crabs and oh i was gonna say i doubt you'll ever see them but here's one right here chilling usually they're hiding so uh here's my thumb I'll give you an idea and there he is right there uh, i've been taking the babies out of the adult enclosure which i'll get to later it's behind me here uh, just so that the adults aren't eating them so they chill up here with archimedes big blue meanie clockwork beta and father fish uh, passing through that's honey back there another little crested gecko and this is my attempt at a cricket factory but that's not fish stuff, right? Up here uh, is where hopefully some CPD eggs will hatch. I've been keeping an eye. Plenty of stuff in there for them to eat if they want to. And this is one of, this is an old style tank. There used to be wet batteries in cars and this is one of the containers that would hold those. Um, you'll see that around as a little antique fish jar. Um, you see them for sale sometimes. Uh, the bigger version of it is over here. has like a Greek pattern on the top, but um, I always like to score those if they're available. Next up is um, my 55 gallons, my biggest tank so far. And uh, back when the pandemic first started, there uh, Rachel O'Leary, when she was making more videos, she had a scraping from scraps, you know, just stuff you had around challenge. And I made a tiny... Uh, 10 gallon version and I like the design and when I moved here I said oh I'm gonna make a bigger one but uh, now I've decided that I, for a fish room I really need this full of water um, I have some fish that need to move into here so I'm gonna be taking this down piece by piece um, the pump stopped working it was a nice little drip waterfall and there was an island back here so it kind of came like an open area and then uh with this island here and land back here, there was just a tiny thin stream coming out into another big open area. So right now I have some uh, wild type endlers in here and I'm gonna be moving them around. I have some bigger fish to go into this tank and I have a tank ready for them to move into. Also in here are three loaches, a silver, a red, and a normal striped, the all coolie loaches. Um, that I never see, so hopefully I'll, or I'm sure I'll find them along the way and move them into whatever tank's right. I'm going to keep the substrate and just uh, top it off. Down here is just a, a little coal tank for uh, my reds. And uh, there's some uh, ram's horn snails in there too. This is going, this is a 16 gallon cube. It's going to um, be my little new natural salt tank. I have this one going, which is only about two and a half gallons. So they're going to get upgraded to here, but not yet. Cause I have a lot of work to do with the other tanks, like tearing this one around and musical fish everywhere. They're all going to be moving around in here are my multifasciatus shell dwellers, uh, Maltese. People like to call them, and there's a couple Bichardi in there, and they're going to be moved away because I want to do this as a species-only tank for the Shelleys, and I let this uh, water let us go crazy in here, um, but I'm going to actually be pulling that out too, but there's actually a um, little cliff back here uh, where the rock-dwelling cichlids were living, but since there's only a couple Bichardis left, I want to take that all out and expand the rest of it to be all shells so that this healthy little multi-colony here can expand and do their thing. Uh, so I have the extra shells here ready to go, so I'm going to clean those out. We'll move over here to the desk tank and kind of explain what's going on here. Uh, desk tanks over here with Fudgy the whale. I just put some 
Shell Dwellers from Aquatic Arts in there. Um, oops. One little guy peeking at us here. They're Kigoma, and I don't even know how to pronounce that. I haven't heard anybody else say their name yet. Uh, Lamprologus ornatopinus. That sounded great. Ornatopinus, however that's said. Um, they kind of remind me the mud skippers of Shell Dwellers. He's so funny peeking out because they're kind of built to sit on the bottom. They have those little fins that st stick out, those pectoral fins that kind of like little tripods for them. And uh, let's see who else we can find. This is a nice big one. I think I caught some breeding behavior off of them already today. I put eight of them in here, and a lot of them are juveniles, but um, since I wiped out their stock, they had eight left, so I bought eight. Um, some of them are full grown, so hopefully they make babies. This tank is a 40 breeder. Just on cinder blocks and uh, some particle board from some furniture. Gotta sweep that up. But uh, we had a glass top desk um, that just really didn't survive the move. Uh, it was just a uh, little aluminum pipe supporting it. And so I said, I don't want to get rid of the glass. That's Fudgy the Whale. So I used the old desktop just as my top to the 40 breeder. The other uh, pieces of glass are around the fish room, covering different tanks, supporting lights. And uh, what I one thing that was kind of nice is that there were some pre-existing holes drilled where other things were connected. So airlines going into one, and um, I have some of my food in a squeezy thing, so the nozzle goes in there, and that's how everybody gets fed. Uh, and it's kind of the same setup as this forty breeder over here, just uh, on wood. And cinder blocks and my brother says he's gonna build me some stands later so what do you think about that Lily yeah see where I spilt some black water I gotta get the garbage shampoo in here so we're almost about halfway through the fish room we still have this little rack area over here and this rack area over there so I'm gonna move along um, I guess we'll come over here cuz that's where these endlers are going is into this 29 gallon there's already a couple mamas in here and this is overwintering uh, one of my lilies for the pond so they get to spend the winter in there there's a little mama where you go lady so above them is another 29 um, kind of there are some kind of misfit fish in here my platy but uh, there's these Congo tetras they're gonna stay and kind of the misfit cichlids from other tanks are gonna come over um, Congos will stay in there so will the molly or the platy these how are you guys being shy you are not shy these little juvenile spin earth eaters are going to get big, much bigger. And I'd like to get them to have babies and I want them to have more sand substrate area and not be in here with other fish. I want to have them in the species only tank. So they're going to go over there to the endler tank. Once I get that rock out, the whole bottom will be sand for them to dig through and then I'll fill it up with water. Um, and then I have an epistogramma. We'll get to her in a minute and she's going to go live in there with them. So since I ha keep a lot of things with hard water tanks or hot hard water, um, that one's going to be more for the South American soft water fish, which I don't have many of, but these guys have a lot of personality and I can't wait till they get bigger and color up. Um, uh, but they really come in big like puppy dogs all the time. So moving up, uh, probably won't see anybody right here. Oh, yeah, I see them hiding from us. This is my tomato red vampire spot. So um, there's a little forest floor, a little creek that goes through the middle, forest floor over here, which kind of is nice. It gives the crabs different territories. Um, a lot of the plants that are over here in 
what is for now a paludarium are going to get moved um, between the tomato red vampire crab enclosure, the two little gecko spots. Um, and a lot of them are just house plants. This is uh, different house ferns I got. So, um, some of them are things out of the yard, like this and this. Um, more help, just normal house plants, rabbit foot fern. Now these are little actual terrarium plants that I got from the pet store. So those, they do well with this humidity. Um, so yeah, so those plants will be moving over, uh, make this a little fuller, uh, for these vampire crabs, I'd really love to get them going. Oh, look, somebody's out again. Oh, and he hit again because uh, they've already had babies. So, and I don't see these in a the hobby. They're so fun and cool. I'd love to see them around more. So we got this rack done. Moving over to here. This is where I'm putting my boy guppies for now. And there are some misfit fish. There's a Danio. <laughs> oh. A goldfish I'm growing out. It's going to go to my dad's huge pond. And then all of the boy guppies. And they have a steel cage on top. Which, because some of these tanks I just found on, you know, on garbage day and stuff. And this was a lizard enclosure. So it came with this wire top. I'm fine with it because I can make sure none of these boy guppies ever jump out into my endlers. Uh, I'm going to be very, very careful with that situation. So that's what's going on in this tank. Boys, down here is my pair of Crabensis. Uh, they have a few light clouds for dither fish. And I swear I just cleaned this glass. Uh, a little bully mass Julie. So that mass Julie... We'll be moving over here to where it's going to be misfit cichlids. And we'll leave that pair alone. And maybe they'll finally get down to it. Move into the last racks. Up here we have Jamaican Limia black belly live bears. And I like the black on the male when they start to color up. Um, so I want them to be a species only tank so that they feel comfortable to do their thing. And we have little Miss Epistogramma in here. And, uh, she's probably going to go over with the Sven Earth Eater cichlids. Um, cause they can handle her and I think she's just gonna go after these babies when they're born, so... That won't work. Uh, these three tanks are all just going to be my girl guppies. There's a Kerbensis and another uh, Julie in there. Julie to So figure out where they're going to go. Uh, but these will be all girls. Girls, girls, girls. Down here are my punk cichlids. <laughs> Cotopunctus, Cotopunctatus. I think a family member might come busting in here soon because I can hear them looking for the dog. Um, so there's only three of them. I hope to get more. I uh, really want to breed them. I love them. They're really beautiful fish. And uh, curious, fun guys. Yeah. Down here is just more of a natural tank, kind of stuff I pulled out of the pond, some stuff this year. And uh, these are going to just house three golden top fin minnows, which are local to Pennsylvania here. Um, some more guppies to be sorted and placed into their proper places. There's another Julie, Mast Julie, Gombe Mast Julie from Aquatic Arts. Uh, so once we again, boys, 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 girls, girls, girls. So those guys will get moved, and that'll leave us a nice open tank up here. Um, just some white clouds. And last but not least, for sure, where'd he go? Is Pee Wee the pea puffer? He's out there hunting snails. 
Oh, I see you back there, Pee Wee. Yeah, he's doing his work. Pee puffers are fun. I love their my first guys with uh, little independent moving eyes. Oh, Pee Wee, we can't focus. There we go. Um, yeah, definitely recommend trying this fish at least once. Uh, lots of hair algae to get out of there. And with that, that's what's going on in my fish room right now. Better end this video. Uh, cause I can hear the family looking for where this dog is. She is a sweetie and I can know, I hear them upstairs and where is our big fluff? So bye for now, guys. Hopefully Lily will hang out with us again and, uh, keep on working in the fish room. Later.